Hello, in this video, I am going to discuss about the William Weaver's model of predicting failure. Actually, in corporate world, there is always a thrust to see how well the financial or how good the financial health of the company is. The financial health to a large extent is also linked with the possibility of distress, whether the company is really going to encounter a position of distress in near future or not. So there are different models which have taken birth over years which tries to check the possibility of corporate distress. The popular amongst them is the Altman's model, the Marks, Mark Blum's model, the Wilcox model and one of the oldest model in this context is the William Beaver's model of predicting failure as propounded in the year 1968 by William Beaver. Now, this video is devoted to discuss about William Beaver's model of predicting failure. Now, when it comes to predicting corporate failure, it is like a model which would tell us that these, these measures are to be used or these, these parameters are to be used to see or check whether the company has the possibility to face a distressed position or there is a possibility that the company might fail. Now, William Beaver's model is also one of the models which try to find out some such ratios that can be used or that are the predictors of corporate failures, which can be used to see whether the company can, in the course of time, have the possibility to fail or to encounter a distress situation. Now, William Weaver preceded his study with the background that much of the accounting practices are based on some priori arguments or priori beliefs or priori appeals. That means that many a times what we interpret is based on what is the priori without actually empirically testing the validity of the same. What I want to say is that when I want to say what is the, how do we check the short term solvency position of a company, we generally refer to the current ratio. Long term solvency position of the company, we generally refer to ratios like debt equity ratio. But do they really have the predicting power? Okay, so that is what concerned William Beaver. So William Beaver was concerned that accounting measures should be checked in terms of its predictive ability and the predictive ability in this case is the chances of failure. Now how do we predict failure with the help of financial ratios and which are those ratios which are useful or which are the two predictors of financial or corporate failures. This is what his model tried to find out. He tried to explore the existing work and the existing literature, but alas, he found that most of the literature devoted to this subject is concludes that yes, financial ratios are the better predictors than random prediction. That was the conclusion of the earlier studies that yes, financial ratios are comparatively more scientific and more uh, rational in predicting the corporate failures than random predictions. That is all what was there in the existing literature. But these, these studies, the earlier studies, the ratios they used was used indiscriminately. Just they tried to use, make use of some ratios without knowing whether these ratios truly have the predicting power or not. So the focal point of his analysis was based on liquid measures. He tried to make use of some liquid assets and non-liquid asset ratios. So he computed some non-liquid asset ratios and some liquid asset ratios. I repeat again, his measures of predictability was done in two phases. At the first phase, he wanted to check the predictive capacity of liquid assets vis-a-vis -vis non liquid asset that means which one is the better predictor is liquid asset is a better predictor or a non liquid asset is a better predictor of corporate failure also he wanted to check within the liquid assets which are those ratios which are the better predictor 
so in his paper he has mentioned liquid asset measure vis-a-vis -vis non liquid asset measure and liquid asset measures vis-a-vis -vis each other so these are the two phases of his analysis now which are those non liquid assets we were considered we were considered cash flow to total debt ratio net income to total assets ratio and total debt to total assets ratio these were the three non liquid measures or non liquid assets that he considered remember the idea was to check which amongst these three are the better predictor and whether non liquid assets are better predictor or liquid assets are better predictor so he used these three non liquid measures and he used some liquid measures as you can see the liquid measures are grouped into three categories category a total asset group category b current debt group and category c that is net sales or turnover group so within each group you can see there are four distinct items current assets to total assets quick assets to total assets net working capital to total assets cash to total assets so remember when we do ratio analysis and when we try to make liquidity analysis we generally make use of four ratios current ratios quick ratio net working capital ratio and the cash to total asset ratio so he used these four variables current assets quick assets net working capital and cash to total assets under all the three categories you can see in category a also current assets quick assets net working capital and cash to total asset is there in category b we have current assets quick assets cash to current assets and category c current assets quick assets net working capital and cash to sale one observation you might have seen that all these three categories contain four four variables or four four ratios but the second category includes only three so what is missing in the second category is the net working capital to total debt or current debt ratio this is so because net working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities and if you divide current assets minus current liability divided by total debt it will be same as the current ratio just a difference of one constant so that is why that was omitted from the uh, second category so second category had only three ratios whereas the other categories had four four ratios now before you proceeded with the analysis he tried to uh, uh, summarize what is the current priorities what is the belief that is existing so naturally now if you can relate with your existing knowledge also you will realize that generally it is viewed that non liquid asset ratios are generally regarded as measure of long term solvency yes it is true non liquid assets are generally used to measure the long term solvency whereas the liquid assets ratios are used to judge the short term solvency position so liquid asset ratios are predictors for short term solvency whereas non liquid assets are generally the long term solvency remember this is not the findings of william beaver this is what is generally believed these are the priorities second priority is that liquid asset ratios will predict failure better than the non liquid asset ratios one and two years before failure this is as per the research that was done before weaver so before weaver has done his research most of the researchers advocated that liquid asset ratio will predict failure better than non liquid asset ratio one or two years before failure okay if the company is failing this year just the before, last year and last to last year if you make use of liquid assets it will be able to predict better but for for knowing or predicting the chances of failure for years more than 2 years back you have to make use of non liquid asset measure this is what is written here that the liquid asset ratio will predict failure better than the non liquid asset ratio one or two years before failure whereas the non liquid asset ratio will predict better four and five years before failure these are the priorities these are what has come up what is the belief and what is the advocacies 
Also, there are some more beliefs or some more characteristics of liquidity. We all, uh, the prior belief is that before William Beaver has propounded his model and he came up with his findings, it was believed that the cash, the item cash, is the least advocated measures of predictability. predictability. That means if a firm has abundance of cash, it does not mean that the firm will not become uh, bankrupt or it will not be uh, failing. Because cash is not considered to be a very good predictor. It is not Beaver's argument. It is the argument which existed before. Current ratio. Current assets. in Now when we call talk about current asset. Current ratio. Current ratio is also not very much advocated. Okay. Cash is not advocated as a good measure of predicting failure. Even current ratio is also not regarded as a good measure of predicting failure. Why? Because I am telling you in current asset when we consider current ratio, current ratio is nothing but current assets divided by current liability. In the current assets we have a component called inventory. Now if this inventory is slow moving, if the inventories are blocked up in the business, of course it kills the health of the company but the current ratio will will never reflect that current ratio will be showing a satisfactory result if there is more inventory and therefore the uh, the accountants or the analysts they generally do not consider current ratio to be a good in, in the indicator also it is subject to window dressing because current ratio uh, i mean uh, current ratio and current ratio is nothing but current assets by current liabilities before the financial statements are prepared the managers can very well pay off the current debts and improve their current ratio and that is why it is subject to window dressing and therefore current ratio is also not a good measure of predictability and it's not again i'm telling you not beaver what who is saying this it is as per the uh, belief what was existing before william beaver's model however networking capital and quick assets have been advocated always the the accountants and analysts they advocated networking capital and the and the quick assets to be a better predictor and cash is never advocated as a good predictor so this is what was there or what was existing as a practice cash is not advocated as a good measure current ratio also not advocated as a good measure and of course working capital and quick assets were taken as a good measure of predicting financial health and of course the probability of failure now beaver's analysis how did beaver's proceed his study beaver's study is based on 79 failed and 79 non-failed firms he collected the data from Moody's Industrial Manual during the period 1954 through 1964. He collected the firms covering 38 industries. Okay, and the asset range of those industries were from six lakh dollars to 450 lakhs dollar. Okay, so there were small size firms also, large size firms also included in his sample. Now, data for the failed firms were collected for five years prior failure. So, he collected the financial statements of the failed firms five years prior they failed. And simultaneously, he collected the data of the non-failed firms also for the same fiscal years, the five years prior. Okay. So, the, the, the non-failed firms, their data were also collected five years time and correspondingly the failed firms data were also correct collected the for the last five years okay now what happened during his analysis he made three stage analysis dichotomous classification test comparison of meal values ratio components and likelihood ratio analysis i will not go through the last one likelihood ratio analysis because that, that is more research oriented more analytical which i will cover in my next video whereas in this video we are confined to the first two and that is the crux of his model altogether now dichotomous classification test now what he found under this test he found what he did in his analysis please try to understand this in his analysis he the 79 farmed and the failed farm and non-failed farms that he took he made two groups two subgroups 
okay and what he did for the first subgroup he calculated all the ratios as i have shown you before liquid asset ratios also non liquid ratio assets ratio also he calculated the liquid asset ratio as well as non liquid asset ratio for the first group let's not talk about the second group i'm telling you again that the entire sample he segregated in two groups for the first group he calculated all the ratios and what he did he tried to set the firms in the ascending orders of the computed values okay so the firms are set as per the ascending orders now he selected a cut off ratio okay he selected a cut off ratio which he feels is an ideal ratio for a particular measure and all those firms which are below this ratio they are considered to be failed firms and all those firms which are above that ratio they were considered to be non failed firms now once he has done so he checked the results with the actual whether what he classified the firms as failed did they really fail and what he classified as non failed did they really did not fail so he wanted to check the accuracy or prediction a uh, predictive accuracy now if he finds that there are a lot of uh, errors or there the the ratios or the classification misclassified the firms to a large extent then he changed the cut off ratio okay he changed the cut off ratio as many times as it would give the results i mean the correct results that means in actual how many firms the number of firms failed would match the firms which have failed as per his analysis once the cut off ratio is selected that ratio will be used for the second group okay for example if he says that the current ratio is 2 is to 1 which is considered to be a cut off so all the firms which are below 2 is to 1 will be considered as a failed and the all the firms which has to more than 2 is to 1 is to be considered as non failed now this 2 is to 1 remains a criteria for the second group for the second group also he will find out which are those firms which got less than 2.1 2 is to 1 and which are those firms which got more than 2 is to 1 and then he will check for the second group also in actual did it really match did the firms are uh, are uh, are correctly classified or is there is misclassification so this is how he proceeded so remember the cut off which was determined from the first group would be checked against the second group similarly a cut off from the second group will be checked for the as against the first group so this way he would check the predictive capacity of the ratios so he would find out which are those ratios which could classify the firms correctly if this ratio is able to classify the firms correctly then we would say this ratio has a very high predictive capacity and this ratio should be used in order to know whether the companies can fail in future or not now this is how he carried on his analysis now what was his findings so his findings was first the most important findings he he got is that consistently superior performance of non liquid asset ratio he found that the predictive capacity of non liquid asset ratio was very high that means non liquid assets predicted corporate failure much better than liquid asset ratio second point was that the cash flow and net income ratios remember i showed you the non liquid asset measure so out of them there were three out of these three the two of them that is cash flow and net income ratios have a lower percentage error when there is a lower percentage error that means they are having more predictive power so when they have a more predictive power that means they are best better indicators so the cash flow and net income ratios have a lower percentage error than all the 11 liquid asset ratios in all the 5 years before failure so the first and the second point says that non liquid measures are better predictors than liquid measures
Now, superior predictive power of non-liquid asset exists not only in the long run but also in the years shortly before failure. So remember, this mismatches with the priory because when I started the presentation, I said so some of the priorities were that liquid assets will uh, measure the short-run solvency, whereas non-liquid assets will measure the long-run solvency. But it was not true because non-liquid assets predicted the chances of failure better in the long run also but in the short run also means shortly before the company fails that time also if you use non-liquid asset measure it will be useful in the long run also it will be useful now also they found which did know which is an which is a irony or which is a, against what is what was the priory that is predict superior predict, predictive power of cash as I mentioned in one of the earlier slides that cash is least advocated in the literature whereas in his findings he found that cash has a better predictive power and networking capital and quick assets are the better predictors. So cash is of course a better predictor but not networking capital and quick assets are also good predictors but not as best or as good as cash. To less, therefore, his findings was such, he found that two less frequently advocated measures, that means networking capital and cash, these are less advocated in the literature, outperform the current asset and quick assets, the two more frequently advocated measures. So cash which is least advocated and working capital which is also not advocated in the literature, they were found to be much a better predictor than the frequently advocated measures that is current assets and quick assets. So he has used in his paper that popularity is self-defeating. What is popular is found to be defeating here. Now justification of the findings. Why did he find that cash flows or net income and total, why did he find that a long term uh, solvency, okay, that means uh, non-liquid assets are better predictors it, found, it is so because he justified that long-term positions cannot be altered easily and generally more indicative of bankruptcy. Actually, long-term positions you cannot alter. For example, I, I already told you current assets. If you have to improve the current assets, you can pay off your current debts and improve it. So you can alter the short-term uh, uh, variables, but in the long-term you cannot. Therefore, long-term indicators are your better predictors. Now, uh, this was the first analysis and in the first part of his analysis, he found that non-liquid measures are the better predictors. Cash is advocated. Cash is a better predictor and networking capital is also a better predictor and quick assets is also a relatively better predictor, but current asset is not at all a good predictor. Current asset was not found to be a good predictor. Now, after this, he also did another analysis where he tried to find out the ratio, the the mean values of the ratio components. That means he used a, a lot of ratios like he used uh, current asset ratio where there are variables like current assets by current liabilities. He used quick asset ratio. The variables are quick assets and quick li uh, current liabilities. So he tried to find out the mean values of all those ratios. Okay, mean value of current assets, mean value of sales, mean value of quick assets, mean value of working capital. He found the mean values of the failed firms also. He found out the mean values of the non-failed firms also. Now, once he has analyzed what he found, he found that the failed firms are characterized by less sales and lesser growth in sales. So, failed firms had a lesser turnover and a lesser growth in their turnover. Poor cash flow and net income higher debt, overall poor solvency position, failed farms are small sized and the most important outcome of his analysis of ratio component of that is that failed farms had less cash and more accounts receivable. Okay, And that probably is the reason why current ratio or you can say that this probably is the re reason why cash is a more advocated measure of predictability. And he also found that when cash and accounts receivable, so remember here, less cash and more accounts receivable, a firm which is failing will have less cash and more accounts receivable. So when you add cash and account receivables, if you add the two, 
it goes in current assets also you it goes in the quick assets also so remember cash and accounts receivable are included in the quick assets and they are also included in the current assets now this point says that the failed firms will have less cash and more accounts receivable now when they are added in the current assets and the quick assets the effect gets nullified and therefore quick assets and current ratio is not a good indicator okay so therefore quick assets and current ratios are not a good indicator because both carry cash and receivables where the failed firms the reaction is opposite they have less cash and they have more accounts receivables okay failed firms have more current debts and less current assets failed firms have less inventory so remember uh, as per the common belief the firms which have uh, le less inventory is supposed to have more solvency okay but here it found it is found the opposite the failed firms had less inventory this is the reason why quick assets were marginally a superior indicator than current assets okay because in weaver's model quick asset was found to be relatively better than the current assets but not a very high degree of difference existed between the two this was because failed the difference between current assets and quick assets in inventory and failed firms had less inventory okay so that is all about the beaver's model and uh, the the sum and substance the crux of this model is that he found out that non liquid measures are the better predictor cash is a better predictor net working capital is a better predictor but current ratio is not a good predictor because current ratio includes current assets and in current assets we have inventories and those firms which are failing they have less inventory so if you use current ratio asset as a measure of predicting distress or failure that will give fallacious conclusion that's all about the beaver's model thank you for watching the video thank you